Hey, Bill, how you doing? Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Uh, oh, wie geht's, wie geht's? I think I said that right. Or guten, no, not to, to guten, no, 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 something like that. I'm, I'm a little yeah, rusty yeah. on my German. <laughs> well, so, I'm, I'm so happy to be back from Iwa. I mean, I had a ball there. I, I love, I love my time in Germany. I love when I can get there. And uh, I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to go there. So, uh, yeah, we are we are back in the USS. You know, I'm sorry, USA. There you go. <laughs> Almost sometimes a, it feels like that. <laughs> a Freudian, a Freudian thing there, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we uh, we had an amazing time at Iwa, and uh, you know, before we get to our guest, Pat, I think we've got a little bit of housekeeping to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got to we got to honor the people who make this all possible. So let's take a moment and uh, check in with our sponsors. Hello, fans. We're taking a brief moment to recognize and show our appreciation for the incredible support of our sponsors. Their commitment not only fuels our content, but also ensures we can bring you the very best of the air gun world. Firstly, a huge shout out to Southern Precision Air Weapons. Ken is a master of hard hitting air gun tunes that deliver unrivaled accuracy. Moving on, we extend our gratitude to high pressure pneumatics. Be sure to check out what Tom has going on at his store in Michigan and online as well. Let's not forget the remarkable contribution of Donnie FL. Their innovations in suppressors have revolutionized the experience in the field, combining stealth with performance. A special thanks to GX Compressors as well for their robust and efficient compressors that are an absolute game changer in the pneumatic technology and convenience. Be sure to check out Scout Air Guns for the Epic and the all-new Evo. JSB and Predator International for the finest in air gun projectiles. Affordable, well-made, and fun air gun products from Umarex Air Guns. And lastly, we express our sincere appreciation for Sabre Tactical. Their tactical gear is not only about strength and durability, it's about taking your air gun experience to the next level. We proudly stand alongside these titans of the air gun industry and invite you, our valued listeners, to explore their outstanding offerings. Supporting our sponsors is directly supporting the air gun geeks, enabling us to continue delivering you the content you love and trust. Thank you for being the most essential part of our journey. Your engagement and support make all of this possible. Until next time, stay tuned and keep supporting those who make the air gun geeks a reality. Well, there we go, Pat. That looks good, Bill. You did a good job on that. Well, thank you very much. We, you know, I, I take our sponsorship very mm -hmm. seriously and we've recently added some new sponsors, which, uh, you know, I think we'll, we'll take the opportunity to invite, uh, our audience to participate here a little bit and uh, maybe get them to email us um, here at uh, the air gun geeks and tell us who, who our new sponsors are with this episode. See if anybody's mm -hmm. paying attention <laughs> and, uh, and can, uh, can call them out. But uh, yeah, we are, we just have got so much going on in 2024. We've got, all new sponsors. We've got, if we get half of the guests that have committed to being on the Air Gun Geeks podcast in 2024, Pat, we will be fortunate beyond reasonable expectations. They, the, the guys that have, the guys and ladies who have signed up to be uh, part of the Air Gun Geeks experience for 2024, uh, man, uh, wow, that's all I can say. I, I can't wait. It, yeah. it, it, it to, and we were just talking about this not too long ago. In fact, on the last podcast, where the podcast came from and where it's grown to, the heights and leaps and bounds. I mean, like you go into Germany to Iowa. Mm -hmm. I mean that that was remarkable in itself, uh, and and the relationships that have sprung from that 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 we're going to talk about here in a little bit, but. It, it's exciting times, and and like always, we appreciate everyone watching and listening. You know, make sure that you uh, subscribe. That's always a key thing, which the YouTube channel, I don't know if you've seen Bill lately since through your travels, has grown tremendously. You're yeah. very near 350 subs on yes. your YouTube channel, and that that is just crazy, crazy growth. 
And you know, if your if your editor for your YouTube content would get off his butt and get some content posted, <laughs> we could continue that growth. Uh, you know, in the future, which which I will do. But you know, as, as you know, Pat, uh, getting back from Iowa, um, combating some really weird lighting issues between, as you may know, you your the European Union uses fifty hertz standard for mm -hmm. their. And of course, I show up there, uh, you know, the uh, giant American Yankee walking around with this camera all set up for 60 hertz power. So I got some irritating strobing from the lights at the uh, at the event center. I was mm -hmm. fine if they were LED lights, but it's the ones that were halogen that were AC power that were giving me fits. But, you know, I did what I could to, to fix the videos to make them look good, but it does take a fair bit of extra work uh, here in the editing chair to get that stuff out. But I'm just, I'm whining. Um, I need a raise, Pat. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a learning curve. And it is. We're all excited about everything. And that is a new thing. It's, it's like back in the day when, when I started this, it, we had to learn sub 12 pound foot pounds of energy. And it's like, Okay, <laughs> we got to learn about that and have some conversations. And uh, we had a lot of people from uh, Europe email us back then and say, you know, look at this and look at that and learned all about that stuff. So growing pains. That's what I'm going to say. It's growing pains. Yep. Fun, fun story on that topic, Pat. Uh, while I was at Iwa, uh, I had some very interested fans actually run me down i was moving through the crowd i was trying to get back to my booth where you know they were the ones that were that were paying my tab while i was there in germany so i needed to get back to work and and these guys were like hey hey geek hey you <laughs> and uh and flagged me down and uh and we stopped and talked and we weren't, we're not going to divulge what that conversation was about yet because nothing is concrete but you know, we were invited to another event in Europe um, this coming year, and we haven't, we don't have any agreement yet or anything, so I don't want to talk about it in detail. But you know, mm -hmm. for us to get, for us to get flagged and say, hey, we want you to come and uh, and cover our event for us and uh, and bring the drone and bring bring all your toys, and you know, that was really really cool. Um, that was exciting that we got chased down now. <laughs> we even we even talked about uh, potentially getting um, a satellite uh, internet link. Uh, Elon makes that very reasonable now with mm -hmm. Starlink, and uh, you know a lot of these events happen out in rural areas, and there isn't much in the way of high speed uh, internet. But we think we could possibly pull off some live coverage of events like that. Mm -hmm. uh, if if the people hosting the event can get it set up with a Starlink device that we can we can get connected to, we've got the tools. I mean, this Correct. this whole StreamYard world that we're recording in now is quite portable, and um, and as long as we get internet, we can we can produce. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah, cool yeah, stuff. yeah. I mean, if you don't know what StreamYard is, you guys should look it up. We can get on your social medias and be live, take live questions. Uh, while an event's going on, so mm -hmm. it's like TV, yeah, with the Air Gun Geeks, the Air Gun Geeks TV channel. Bill, it was just created right here. You just did it. There Elon, you, you want to donate go. a Starlink system? <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> yeah, Elon, uh, you know, let us lend us some of your satellite time too. That would be yeah. really good. Why not throw a Tesla involved? Why not? Uh, you know, you hey, go. I'm not going to complain, although. I got to admit, I, I kind of think the Tesla pickup truck is not my cup of tea visually. Mm -hmm. I was really hoping. And in fact, I had a guy that worked for me a couple of years ago when they first released some images of the Tesla pickup. And I said, man, that thing is not the most attractive truck no. for somebody who likes trucks. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I, went I, love, I love trucks. Uh, but honestly, if I was going to dump that kind of money on an EV truck, it would be a Rivian at this point. Um, I just think they're they're better looking, more utilitarian. Um, Correct. I appreciate the stainless body. I do. It looks extremely durable. 
Um, his sort of bulletproof glass is pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's uh, it's just yeah. visual. It doesn't do it for me. I'm sure it does it for some people. It's a very polarizing design. But anyway. <laughs> But uh, so while in Germany, besides learning uh, the Sprechen Sie Deutsch, um, I heard you met um, some interesting people like Air Arms and this new brand that they got. Um, I thought was pretty cool. Um, I'm one of your little things that will be coming up soon, not to give it all away, but I found that to be pretty interesting. Yeah, I got to speak with Claire, and I've already released uh, a video on uh, on Instagram as a reel mm -hmm. where Claire wanted the opportunity to. There, there's been some naysayers about their changing of the brand for Air Arms, and honestly, you know, this gal is a fireball, mm -hmm. um, and she's got a very clear vision for where she wants that company to go, and uh, just shut up sit down enjoy the ride uh, <laughs> yes that's, that's my advice uh she's she's got big things in mind for expanding her business for growing her business and mm -hmm. uh and she is uh she is absolutely unleashed at this point so i i had a lovely conversation with claire and uh, and potentially she could be one of our guests coming up here on the podcast mm -hmm. shortly so that would be very exciting to get some more uh some more European feel here. Mm -hmm. um, and while we're on that topic, Pat, I had a chance to talk with probably one of the highest profile Europeans um, in the air gun space while I was at IWA. And I have always been a fan of his channel. And he and I have talked at, a, at least half a dozen air gun events over the years. Mm -hmm. We've crossed paths and, this this was unique for me, and it was the first time that I got a chance to sit down and talk with the one and only Giles Berry, mm. uh, the host of the Air Gun Gear Show. Yep. And what a delightful conversation I had with him. And uh, if you're ready, Pat, we can uh, we can get ready to roll that footage here shortly. Are you are you uh, you got anything else you want to add? Oh, you know what we got to do? We got to talk about Palisol. Yes, huh? we do. We got to yeah. loop it up before we can insert the video. Yes, we do. <laughs> that is true. Let's uh, let's make that happen here. Um, so Palisol has offered to support the Air Gun Geeks um, by providing some Palisol starter kits. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like the uh, the crack dealers model, where you give a little bit away. And then, uh, then all of a sudden, you got a bunch of uh, bunch of customers for life. And and Ballastol is that kind of product where you you use it once and you're like, oh my gosh, where has this been all yep. my life? Um, it literally does everything. You can use it as a leather dressing on wood. Uh, it's great for metal maintenance and protection for cleaning air guns. It really is um, an outstanding product. And they have been kind enough to extend to our Air Gun Geek fan base uh, a giveaway where they're going to give away five mm -hmm. kits. Um, and all you have to do is email the Air Gun Geeks. You can email us at airgungeeks at gmail.com mm -hmm. and put in their ballast all. We, we, some guys have had some fun with this and their entries. Mm -hmm. Uh, the one guy said ballastol. It's not just for guns. You can use it as cologne, too. Oh, well, um, I do. You know, why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't exactly use that for my cologne, but uh, hey, you know, to each his own. I'm who, who am I to judge? But yeah, get yourself some ballastol. Uh, get yourself in the running here. And, uh, and also, as a function of joining uh, this contest, you'll also become an official member of the air gun geeks email list as well, mm -hmm. where we can, uh, we can send you out what's going on behind the scenes, uh, what's coming up and uh, important things that you might need to know coming from the air gun industry. Yep. So with that, make sure you put your full name and your address and yes. we will, <laughs> we will put you in the running for a bell stock kit. Also continental us only. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, 
Very true. Uh, actually, no. I think I think they are shipping to Hawaii and uh, and Alaska. So I take that back. Just to make yes, sure. Yes, we did verify that. US. That is correct. Yes, it is yeah. in the U.S. So U.S. Uh, only. Yeah, U.S. only for the Balasaw giveaway. Uh, we will ask them if they if they have an interest in doing an international one. I got to go to the Ballastall booth at Iwa, and uh, it was fun. I, I don't know that there were there were maybe two English speaking people there. <laughs> <laughs> there. There were some hardcore Germans there for sure, but it was it was a hoot a hoot to see their display. Yes, yes, um, yeah, and pretty much that's yeah that's and if you want stickers, you know you can. We got still got that going on with the stickers and stuff, and um, I think we're going to oh, throw yeah. stickers yeah. out I mean, anyways with your address since you're on the email list. Yes. Yep. Let me uh, let me get that information up here on the screen for who people should be voting for, Pat. I mean, Correct. we don't we want to make sure they're not confused, right? Most definitely. <laughs> yes, yeah. we don't want them confused that they're only voting no. for me or Bonnie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There's there's Bonnie. Yep. Uh, so if you're voting for Bonnie, you just go to airgungeeks at gmail.com, put in stickers, and that will go towards Bonnie. And if you want to vote for Bill, you will just go to airgungeeks plus Bill, the plus sign plus Bill at gmail.com. And if you want to vote for me, that would be airgungeeks plus Patrick at gmail.com and what we'll do is we'll send you out a couple stickers and you can proudly put them out to sh spread the information about the podcast and how much you love it and yeah. love your favorite host <laughs> so very good well i think we need to get to our video because yes. it's, it's a little chunky and i want to encourage you watch it to the end because there's a mm -hmm. we have the exclusive announcement on some really interesting developments with Airgun 101 that you're definitely going to want to check out. Most definitely. Very excited. The pearl is in the river. Did PJ send you? He did. Oh, there we go. That works. It means someone to something. It means something to someone, doesn't it? I yeah. phrased that the wrong way. Yeah. There we go. Nice to see you. Giles, it's a pleasure to finally get you on the Air Gun Geeks podcast. No, thank, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. We have crossed paths before, but uh, we've always been so busy doing our own things that we never got a chance to connect. Yes. And I want to tell you that uh, you have been a large part of my journey in the Air Gun world. Okay. Because I have tuned into probably every video you've done <laughs> because they're so enjoyable. You bring right. an element of, of personality and fun and humor to the air gun world that a lot of us in the air gun world really appreciate. So thank you. I'm very grateful for you watching. Um, it's clearly you watching many, many times that, that generates the view count. So thank you for that. And genuinely thank you to everyone out there that ever watches my videos. If I can entertain you and make you smile, that's that makes me smile and that's it. There we go. So no, thank you for watching. Right. Thank you very much. Now, did you start your career as like a court jester or how did you, uh, how did you arrive in this? Well, I mean, the, 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 I, I would say from the moment I was born, my mother sort of laughed at me. So, I mean, that's a, but that's a different story altogether. Um, no, I just, I just genuinely, I just, I saw some videos out there years ago and I was kind of like, okay, they're great. They're informative. And, and, um, um but I've got a sense of humor and it goes a little too far sometimes, but I, I just like to have fun with it. And, yeah, that's yeah. I like to have fun with it. I'm trying not to talk too much because once I get going, I chitter chatter. But it's okay. You know, this is a podcast, right? That's is, what is that what it is? Okay, is that what you want me to do? Okay. Talk. Um, yes. Now, I like to. Um, I have many, many friends in the industry and around and about, and I like to have fun with that sometimes, and I like to have a bit of humour with that, and they all like to get involved. Um, I love. Like I said, the people in the industry, the shooters themselves. Yeah, and just making videos is just fun. It's just fun. And when you put that video out and you watch that view count go up and people send you little messages and like, I really enjoyed that. Um makes it makes the weeks of effort all worth it. 
Yeah. There you go. And, you know, your your content doesn't come without a large investment of time on your part. So when you say weeks of effort leading up to that, you really mean that. I genuinely, it is, yeah. You can see from the quality of the product that there's planning there. There's You've written that, or you've at least got it planned out in your head. Absolutely. Everyone has their own different methods, mm -hmm. and everyone has their own styles. Sure. So uh, some of the hunting style, some of the review style, and they all do it their own way. But no, genuinely, when I make a video, it does take me around two or three weeks. It's an all day, every day thing. Uh, sometimes I do have a little bit of help. So I have Ben that uh, is involved in the 101 platform and things, and he will come along and sometimes he will film some scenes, mm -hmm. but 90% of it is me with a camera. And yes, the, I sit at night and these crazy ideas come up in my head. How do I put a twist on this? How do I put a twist on that? And that's 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 what happens. The, the, it's just- You think to yourself, no one else would let me do this, but YouTube would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, YouTube is a little bit more coy. Um, you, you, sometimes you do have to be a little bit careful nowadays. I hear you. But um, no, I try and keep it reasonably clean mm -hmm. uh there has been different things in different videos in times gone past that have needed blanking out but no i i just have these zany ideas and i like to go with them and i'll sometimes make a bit of fun of the product make a bit of fun of the manufacturer but they all laugh and no matter who's in it they it's just it's just a bit of fun and you gotta have a bit of fun it, we can't just we can't be too serious in life, can we? So, and that's. And I would say that even though um, you go to that length to bring that creativity and that that lighter side to the urban space, the quality of the information that you convey is is really good. I, I'll be honest. I don't. I get that information um, from either testing the product. Sure. Or actually learning from what I get from other people. Sure. So, yes, I try and do it. I'm not right all the time. Let's be honest. I've said some things that are wrong and bits and pieces. But I just try and, yes, just give over as best you can. But I do learn. And there are other YouTubers out there that I watch. And I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, that's how that works. And that, and that And so it's not just... You don't, you don't get it all yourself. I, I still learn every day and I will watch a video and go, oh, I didn't know that. And that's how you know. So yes, we all do it. Hopefully the information is correct. Um, but it's not just on, on me. There's a load of guys out there that I learn from. Yeah. So I've noticed in a lot of your videos, you've got a range at home. Yes. And uh, it, it looks like that might be in a more agricultural area okay. in England. So I lived in England in 2012. I lived in yeah. England. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about your area and what's going on there. And is is Giles really a farmer? That does <laughs> farmer Giles. What's going on? Yeah, they got old British name. So no, basically, um, I've, I've changed locations a couple of times uh, uh, during the year, during the time. And I, I was down a farm more to begin with. Um, however, what happened there really is that that farm was a working farm. So you have, it was it was a cattle farm, it was a beef farm. and But he also had- Well, they frowned on you shooting cows. No, yeah, well, the, the cows weren't too happy either, let's be honest, but no, never shoot a cow, let's be quite clear. Yeah, okay. But um, what happened- Not a suggestion. No, it's not, it's absolutely not. So, but what it was is, I started to film so much and I'm friends with the, the farmer chap there and I'm filming so much that he's actually having to stop work uh -huh. to let me film. And we got on really well as friends and you just get to the point where it's kind of like I would go down to film and he needs to do some welding on the tractor. He can't weld because I want to talk to the camera. And you do kind of realize in the end that this is going a little bit further than just the odd YouTube video. So then you move out into the fields. It's England, so you get the weather. 
to the weather. Does it but, rain there? Does it rain there? And does the wind blow? Absolutely. Yeah. So you get that. They don't call it old lady for nothing. No, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we are paranoid about the weather. We look at the weather every night and every morning so we know what we can do. So you then go out into the fields. The weather kind of beats you. Fortunate enough to have bought many years ago a fixer up a house mm -hmm. which was a derelict house which we 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 then redid and that came with a little plot of land around it so i now have a couple of uh sort of 50 yard ranges there which mm -hmm. i'm very lucky with but you do have to give over a bit of the garden for it and the wife is very accommodating with that um and then i do have um obviously i have permissions in different areas where I go and shoot and film as well. Um, so yes, it's it's around around the house a little bit, a couple of uh, local permissions, and and that's kind kind of how it's developed. And I still pop down to the farm from time to time. It's it's it is just I I I, I was interfering with farm life, and and that's not fair on the farmer. No, 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 not at all. Yeah. Because they've got to, they've got to move to the speed of the animal. They've got to, they've got to respond to things when they absolutely, do. absolutely. That is, that is the thing. Is that, you know, if he needs to bring the cattle through the yard or stuff like that, the fact that I've set up a mini range and I'm shooting a BB pistol there, uh, that that you know, it might have taken me an hour to set up to get the one shot. I, you know, the cattle have to come through, and you know, I was drinking an awful lot of his coffee. And taking an awful lot of his time. He gave you coffee. He get me. He used to give me coffee and biscuits. Yeah, yeah. I want to meet this man. And he had a he had a super other half that used to give me cake and things like that. But genuinely, it just got to the point where I'm in the way of the farm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I just buggered off and went and did your own thing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's that's kind of the way. And he still would let have me back down now. And I could, I you know, that's not changed. It's just. I don't like people being in the way. So, yeah. So now you bought this fixer upper, you make your wife work on the house. Yeah. While you go out and play with air guns. Well, uh, something like that. We have a, we had a small building team that helped us to begin with, <laughs> but I did a lot of it. Um, and, you know, I built a little studio there and things like that. Okay. So we got, we, you know, it, we were lucky with what we found. Um, and yes, she's very understanding, very understanding. So walk our air gun geeks through the relationship between Giles and Airgun 101, which is the lovely vest that you've got on today. Yes. Tell us more about that. So what happened was, I don't know if you guys remember, around 2018, 17, 18, I'm not very good with years and dates. Airgun again, again I think. It's something like that. Yeah. Um, a lot of us got deleted. Um, and... Uh, it, it, it was a scary time because you've got 10 years of work. And when I say work, I mean just 10 years of video content that you've made. And all of a sudden, blink, it's just, just gone. Someone's yeah. just decided, we don't like you no more, and, and you're gone. And it's not for a commercial reason. You just feel personally attacked. Sure. And there was a lot of guys around the world that were suffering the same thing. Some guys didn't even get their channels back. Um, and I spoke to a few of the uh, YouTube creators out there like... Uh, Matt Dubber and and Ted and people like that, and we said, look, you know what? What are we going to do? We can't keep accepting this. This is this is bad. So I said, right, I'm going to start my own platform, and literally, I went online and I bought the name Agam One Hundred One dot com, and I uh, got some help and started this video platform off, and. I, everything has been a learning curve. I couldn't do a video platform to start with, had no idea. And so what happens now is um, we have a, a select amount of creators on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and those creators are, we actually stream the footage. So we stream their videos. It doesn't come from YouTube. It actually streams from our servers. And we've got a, a our connections are, we have a business team in New York. India and in the UK, helping us keeping this thing going. It's a, it's, it's massive, and it costs me so much money every month. It doesn't pay for itself. Let's be quite clear. Oh wow! But I'm so passionate that we are not being switched switched off again. There is, we've done nothing wrong. 
if someone in a corporate office somewhere just says, hey, you know, a big man, a big advertiser doesn't like our gun videos this month, you're all gone. I'm not putting up with that. We need we need to have somewhere to go. So that, that that's simply what it is. And um, we have some fantastic sponsors that help us with it. So we have like Pyramid Air, Utah Air Guns, um, and then you have people like Donny FL and Sabre Tactical that help keep it running. But it's not a profitable business. It's not a. It's not something that sits there and makes me. You know, they help cover the bills. But yeah, it's just some. We need somewhere to go just in case. So, Airgun One Hundred and One is really a safe haven for airgun video content. Yes, that the the social media moguls can't touch. Absolutely. And that is fantastic. It is, you, it is, it is, it is, it is pure. It is owned by me. Mm -hmm. There are many, many rumors out there about who owns Egg on 101. Um, and uh, it is me. Uh, it's me. And, uh, and there are guys out there, and I look at the camera and, it, and say, look, I know so many of you want to be on there. Mm -hmm. I hear you. It's, and I can tell you right now that this week we're, testing a login feature where people can go in and put their content on there themselves we are doing it i i know it's just it's all about money so so there is going to be the potential for people to be able to put their own videos on there well i want to tell you that uh, both pat and i would love the opportunity one day to appear on Airgun 101. Yeah, absolutely. Either be a Target Forge or Airgun Geeks or whatever whatever combination you want, we would we would be on. So I'm not I'm not. Don't take this as a, a, a right. this is going to happen next week. No, nope. because actually it's a what YouTube's got it down to an R, but they've got uh, oh, millions of they've got millions of pounds and <laughs> and they've got Google behind them. Let's be yeah. honest. They got a whole alphabet behind them. It, here. That's the one. Right. Well done. Yeah, you yeah. know it. So. And they are a business predominantly. So, you know, if there was no advertising, there'd be no YouTube. Right. Um, so don't take it as absolute 100% that I'm going to say, hey, we're going to be handing out logins next week. And you will still have to speak to us and say, hey, I, 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 I've got some content. I'd like to put it on there. And really for us, it's kind of like if you're just doing a little bit of backyard footage just to share between you and your friends, mm, it, it's... It's a financial thing. So we might say, well, look, okay, that's great, but maybe leave that on YouTube. But for people that are really, you know, giving out information like yourselves, they have a, 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 a genuine good following that is like, you know, people listen to these guys. They're, they, they are giving good information and the general shooters out there can learn from these guys and that they're doing everything right and stuff like that. That's kind of where we, that's what we're going to do. If that makes any sense. Yeah. It does. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, I can't share people's backyard stuff too much, but if you've got information to give out and, and then we, we need, we need you. So, but please watch this space. There we go. Excellent. Thank you very much for that explanation. <laughs> and no one else knew that up until now. So no one else knows that we're, we're testing that. Exclusive. So you do actually have an exclusive. On the Air Gun Geek. Yeah. Yeah, you do actually. No one else knows that. And if we don't actually then get that sorted in the next couple of months, we are going to be in real trouble, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, our 420 viewers will be really upset. I'm kidding. No, no, no. I, but hey, listen, right. I'm going to. I'm going to get started. I'm not going to try and not try and get on a high horse here. Right. People come to me and they're like, oh, you've got this channel and, and, um, you know, you, you're, you don't worry about us small YouTubers and all that sort of thing. No, absolutely. That's wrong. And, and people come up to me and they're like, Hey, I got a hundred views on a video and stuff like that. Fabulous. Okay. That I, it doesn't matter whether you get five viewers or a hundred or you get half a million. Okay. Those people have listened to you mm -hmm. and they, they've listened to you and they've taken in what you've said. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter whether you are talking to an audience of 10 subscribers or half a million. You got, you got 10 people there that want to listen to what you're saying. You are important. Yeah. Okay. So 
what content you put out is super important. You've got an audience and do not worry about your viewing figures. Just even if you've got five people enjoying it, you got five people enjoying it. And as long as you enjoy it, it's fabulous. I mean, I can honestly say that we are the largest podcast in the air gun space. We reach more people through the audio versions, the video versions, all of that. Yeah. We're feeding the video version out on two different channels. My oh, wow. channel, which is Target Forge. And then we created an Airgun Geeks channel as well. But as you know from YouTube, it takes a little while yes. to get the attention of the algorithm and get that yeah. propagate. So, but with the growth that we've seen, um, I, I learned a little game with YouTube that yeah. you can use the shorts okay to pull the rest of the carriage along got you and accelerate yeah. it okay and i didn't want to do that because i really believe the short was just a dopamine pump it's, okay it's people just trying to get the quick fix and then move on yeah and i didn't want to do that no but it totally opened up our demographic yes now we've got instead of males from 40 to 75 years old yeah we actually have women yeah, yeah, there's a woman. And yeah, yeah. much younger viewers. So, you know, the shorts did benefit us that way. It yeah. also exponentially increased our growth. Yes. So the rate of growth that we've experienced on both channels has been monumental. But what I would say to you, and again, like for all you budding YouTubers out there that are like, I want to do this, I want to do that. There is no quick answer no. for YouTube. It is about time and enjoyment. And if you're wanting to start a YouTube channel because you just want to be like Mr. Beast, I would say, so you're doing it for the wrong reason. Yes. Do it because you want to enjoy it. Yeah. And there is no real way that you can make YouTube push it. But your, your audience that are listening to you are the most important thing. And whether that is five or 500,000. Yep, absolutely. Your, your audience is king. And that's, and that's, that's the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you gotta, you gotta follow your passion. You gotta do what makes you happy. Yes. And if you're not doing that, then no. do something that is no. your passion. It does make you happy. And there are some YouTubers out there that are not happy. There are some guys out there that get to 10, 12,000 subscribers. And they're like, I just can't deal with this as a, as a system with YouTube or with things that go on. And, and my advice is like, hey, guys, just chill out, you know, take a break, step away from it, and in, uh, do it to enjoy it. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and we all find it difficult sometimes. It is, you know, I find it difficult to find the time to make videos. And also you do sometimes get to the point where you're like, oh, I've uploaded that. Why has YouTube said no? And you got to upload it again. Anyway, we won't get into that too much, but yeah. just enjoy it. Just yeah. enjoy it. So uh, Airgun 101 also has a shop associated with it as well. Yes. So I basically, um, just prior to COVID, sort of about the same time, um, I was involved in the chronograph project with FX. So the original barrel chronograph was part development down to me. And what happened was is that Frederick came and had a conversation with me about five or six years ago, and he showed me this little gadget and said, what do you think? And I said, it's great, love it, fantastic, um, but I can't get it to do anything with an air gun at all. And he said, right, well, would you like a bit of a project? And I said, you know, I was chuffed to bits. I mean, you got the guy, the owner of FX wants you to do something. So absolutely, I, I did something with the project. It went pretty well. I mean, let's be honest, it, it, you know, you always get your little trip over points along the way. Sure. Um, so I, that first chronograph was a project that I was involved in. I, I think I wrote the first instruction manual and did a lot of the app developments and some stuff like that. Um, and then sort of that finished um, and moved on. And I thought to myself, well, hang on a minute, I've developed it. I've done all this. Why don't I sell some? And I was like, okay, so I'll just make a little website and sell some mm -hmm. and it went bonkers i mean it was just like okay and then i thought well let's try and buy a couple of other bits and pieces of things that i know are popular and i sold those as well and literally started in my garden shed and over two years filled the garden shed filled the house 
And then we had to get a little warehouse in our, in our next village. And I've now got people that do Simon, who looks after our warehouse for us. He does the, the packing and runs everything. I've got Ben that does the website and all that, and I run the shop. We've had some staff come and go, but it's kind of like they're, they're staff that are casual, you know, uh, uh, part-time workers at school and things like that. But no, we have a, we have a shop and it part pays 101. Let's be honest, it helps towards the profits of 101, but I have a shop and I'm not a shopkeeper and I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. Um, and every day again is a learning curve. And yes, so now my full-time job is without doubt air guns. Yeah. So it sounds like you actually have a technical pedigree. I mean, you're, you're helping develop apps and you're... Le it's learning. So that's all it is. It's just, I, so years and years and years ago, I did... Before I, the stone? Yeah, before, well, no, it's the wheel. Uh, just after the wheel. Okay, all right. No, just after the wheel. You, we enter the wheel and child. Yeah, and then, then there's me. And basically, I used to do IT support for a large hotel chain down in London. So I've always had a little bit of a technological brain behind me. And I, that's where I picked that up from. So, but I, literally every day you learn. A box arrives, you open, you learn. Sometimes you don't learn as fast as others, but you learn. And when you speak to an app developer and you're like, okay, so I want this, this, and this on the screen. Yeah. And he's like, well, you, no, you don't understand. An app doesn't work like that. You have to do it this way and it has to be laid out that way. And all the time that information has got to come between the phone and the device. And the, so they tell you by telling you what you can't have. Mm -hmm. So, and you learn that way. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed that as a project and I think it worked pretty well. And yeah, there, there we go. So yes, I have a, I do have a bit of a computing background. Yeah. And that helps with the website and stuff like that sounds like it yeah. helps a lot with a lot of the stuff you've got going on because most of it is very it centric yes absolutely the 101 platform is probably the most complex thing i've ever put together um just because people people think well hang on a minute you know that's fairly simple what you're doing actually when you load that page it pulls from three different places um you know you have the coding you have the actual video stream you have the banners, um, and then you have all the map listing and stuff. So it's pulling from different places. And yeah, granted, it doesn't work super fast everywhere. You know, if you're running a VPN in the back end of Australia, yeah, I haven't got a server out there. So, but, you know, pretty much North America, UK, Europe, it works pretty well. But the, like I say, the learning is just, for me, it's been off the scale. And, we let still learn every day uh the development stuff we're doing now we're like nine versions ahead of what anyone sees and we still can't get it to work properly so that's you know but it's just because it's so complex yeah well the other thing that i think uh airgun 101 offers the airgun air gunners that speaks uh is that you get exclusivity or at least the early Upload, yeah, from a lot of creators. I know PJ Clark, absolutely, Wisconsin Air Gunner. He will upload to you guys first. So yes, if if we as Air Gunners want what you know to see it first to understand what's going through PJ's head, yeah, it's a great space to be in. It's a little scary, yeah, sometimes. It's a bit of a crazy vibe. Oh, absolutely, and yeah. and what it is is um, we tend to get extend. We get either extended uploads like Matt Double will do. An extended version. Ah, you'll get like egg, so egg and get evolution. You can't yeah. So that's the thing. So when you go on there, look for extended versions. So Matt's very good like that. He'll drop us over an extra video. So it looks like the original video, but it's got bits in that YouTube won't have. PJ, fantastically organized, ping stuff over a week before. Um, we have a, a special system where he can send us the content. He always does it at like three o'clock on a Sunday morning when I'm asleep in bed. So I don't know quite what he thinks I'm doing. His three o'clock or your My three o'clock. Oh. I think PJ thinks I sit there waiting for him to send me a video. But no, so he, so yeah, I, well, of course I am. I, I, I'm, not, I'm there all the time. So I'm braced now for PJ. Right, we're waiting for that video. And um, 
so we get that and i would say that uh, yeah we have other we have other creators that do that as well i would say you are probably more organized if you're doing that because like i think most youtubers out there will admit they finish the video and ping it straight onto youtube but if you've got two or three stacked up we're we're grateful we get we get an early uh, early version of them and that is fabulous so you can come over look for extended versions look for exclusives look for stuff that hasn't been out and if you subscribe which is free to do you just simply go into the mail out and once a week you get a list of all the Friday, i believe yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, about about now to be honest should be are you sitting here talking to me yeah, because be typing something no i have a thing called a ben <laughs> and, and 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 ben actually texted me earlier and went mail out and i texted back and went iwa show um so it may go today it may not we have to proof it and whatever but it goes out on a friday stroke saturday and if you give us an exclusive you go right at the top because obviously it's an exclusive and we want to tell people about it and then we list everyone's videos down below a few banners in there from a couple of retailers but that, that's that you know so you don't have to check us every day we'll tell you at the end of every week hey this is new this is what you want to watch you're getting good quality information from the best content creators and i will tell you as a as a consumer of that i love it because i get like the digest yeah and I can see, okay, care about that, care, don't care about that, care about that. And I can go through and, and like in one dose, yes, get exactly what I want, yes, and not be spoon fed whatever the stupid algorithm thinks I want to see next, yes, on YouTube. Absolutely. If Ergon 101, I get, I get like a, like a preview every week of here's what's going on in the Ergon world. That's it. And you can cherry pick what you want. Yeah. I, I love that. Oh, it, it is it is good because it is you know you've got if, if there's a new gun launched it, it just goes in the mail out and and off it goes and so you know what's happened that week um you know we had like shot show and stuff like that we actually couldn't keep up with the shot show coverage we just did like a combined thing towards the end but all that sort of stuff is like you know the, the videos are there it's like as soon as that video goes out it, it it's on um sometimes we're an hour or two behind just because of the time difference and people uploading and things but it's there you're not going to miss anything by going onto our platform in fact you're going to get some really good information and what what we say is that because we do want to have people generally uploading anyway but it's the people that have come through the industry over the years sure. and they're like okay if, if we're telling you that the gun will do this you can be pretty much sure it will and if the gun's got this problem, absolutely. If someone says, look, you know, it, it will do this, but it won't do that, it goes on. There's no sense. We're not a censorship platform. It's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. And, and yeah, and I'm, I'm grateful to everyone that tunes in and watches. Yeah. Well, brilliant. On behalf of all the Airgun Geeks, Giles, thank you for all you do for our community. Well, thank you for watching. And one thing that we try to end all of our interviews with is, do you have a message for our air gun geeks viewers that you would like to share and it doesn't have to be air gun related it can be on any topic you want but something that you would really like to share with them that is something you feel passionate about okay well other than pizza <laughs> i could be pizza no pizza is acceptable be pizza. all right i think for me i'm going to go back to when i first started shooting as, as a young boy it made me smile mm -hmm. and i enjoyed it and on you don't need to look let's be honest you can spend up, upwards of three four five thousand dollars on a complete mm -hmm. setup you could do that if you want you don't need to do that air guns are fun yeah do it safely always safely and always conscious of the people around you but air guns are fun get out there I don't care if you're shooting at five yards or 500 yards. Shoot some pellets, have some fun, and just have it make you smile. And and that is it. That that is it. It is a it is a fun hobby with a fabulous community. You've only got to go to the shows and talk to people. Fabulous, fabulous community. And I don't care whether you're a 
Day State fan, Air Arms fan, FX fan, Steyer fan. I don't care who you are, who or where your loyalty lies, you're an air gunner. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And we're all together in this. Yep. And that's it. Yep. There we go. Well, Giles, thank you very much. Hey, thank you very much for your time. time. And I know you're running around here crazy at Ewa trying to keep up your schedule. And I appreciate you. Well, I'm sorry I was late. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's okay. Should we, I've got to turn the tables on you. How are you doing? Are you enjoying it? What, what, what have you, you know, what do you think of the show? Have you been here before? I've never been to Ewa. This is my first Ewa. Okay. And honestly, this is the first day they let me out of the booth. I really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I came over here to, to rep for GX Compressors, which a lot of my YouTube content is on caring yeah. for those compressors, servicing them. Okay. My company, Target Forge, which is also my channel on YouTube. Yeah. We do a lot of videos on, on maintaining them and we sell parts. Okay. So it, it's kind of been, you know, they feed each other. Yeah. And uh, and they, I was at shot this year. And yeah. they said, hey, would you like to come to Ewa? And I'm like, oh, my God, are you kidding? I, yeah. yeah, what air gunner wouldn't want to go to Ewa? I mean, yeah. this is pretty much Mecca for the air gun world. And for me, it was a, a really unique opportunity. I have, I have traveled so much this winter. I started out in Michigan with David Ding at Leapers. Yeah. Had a lovely time there. Um, I ended up uh, going to Nantung, China. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I got to spend some time there. I got wow. to find out about, about what I saw there. Now I'm jealous. Yeah, yeah. I got some cool travel footage, too, that I'm going to share. Yeah. Um, I got back from there, literally took my clothes out of my bag, washed them, put them back in, and then left for shot. Yeah, that feeling. And then shot, I got there, and they said, hey, you want to go to Ewa? I'm like, okay, let's, well, let's go to Ewa. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, been, it's been a really crazy winter, but, uh, you know, the air gun world has been so huge at, that accepting us. I mean, look at look at our sponsors now. And all those fabulous. Yeah, we've got real names that are yeah. that are actually funding our podcast. So yeah, we're very proud of that. Now you're doing a fabulous you're doing a fabulous job as well. Thank you very much. I mean, it's like you know to have something to you know because you can you can listen as well as view. Do you know what I mean? And that is that is the that is the thing with this now is that you can just listen to the chat which is which is yeah. guy in america you may know him uh mr rogan okay yeah i've yeah, heard that he, name he, yeah yeah he kind of turned the world on its ear of media yeah where he said you know what i'm just a guy who likes fights and i talk <laughs> yeah and, and here he's become this like media icon because people trust him yes they trust what he has to say they know he's not NBC or CBS or BBC or any of those yeah. that are influenced, he's uh, the real guy. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to provide that as well. We're not, you know, we're not biased. We're giving you what we think. No, fabulous. Yeah. yeah. And one more thing before you go, because it's a podcast that we can keep going, but I, we will finish. What's the best thing you like about Germany so far? Well, I am German. Are you really? Yeah, my family immigrated in 1850. Okay. Uh, kind of a funny story. My great-grandfather, he was the master brewmaster in his village. Oh. He got hired to go to America to start the old German brewery. Right. Most of the town found out that he was leaving. They're like, oh, fuck off, man. We're, we got to get out of here. There's not going to be any beer. <laughs> Huh. So they followed him. Wow. They followed him to Maryland, yeah. to Western Maryland in the mountains. Yeah. And that's where he started the, the old German brewery, which really? would have been the longest continuously operated brewery in America had it not been for prohibition. Okay. They were one of the ones that didn't survive oh, that right. decision. Okay. And, but anyway, yeah, that's that's so this is very much I feel very home in, in Germany. Yeah. When I lived in England, I used to hang around with diesel motorcycle guys. Okay. Yeah. 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 All yeah. built these diesel motorcycles. Yeah. Like, hey, you got to go to Germany with us. I'm like, all right. So I got to camp on a farm in Ham, Germany, with my motorcycle. Wow. My old German motorcycle. So yeah, Germany for me is. He's been home. Yeah. So do you have any family left there at all, or? I'm sure genetically that the answer to that is yes. Yeah. Uh, the other half of my bloodline is Viking, so. 
Yeah. You know, oh. the Vikings went around and pretty much spread DNA to every everywhere. Uh, they went everywhere. Uh, yeah. Yeah, literally. Yeah. So yeah. there's family for me anywhere I go, I think, but <laughs> it's kind of the same with all of us a little bit. Yeah. 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 Okay, well they were fabulous. Well there we go. That's it. I, right. I yeah, I I got many more questions, but at some point on we, that bombshell. We've both got things to do. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Nice to see you. Thank Thanks you. for your time. You were a fun interview, sir. Well, Pat, what did you think of that interview? Well, first off, I want to say that Giles was a key part in my air gunning upbringing. I used to watch, I still watch his show, um, but I watched, started watching him like 12 years ago, laughing my butt off, but learning at the same time. Yep. And to meet him in person last year at RMAC and have a good conversation with him, being a little starstruck. And then we get to have him on the podcast and yep. learn where Airgun 101 started and why it started and to where he's taking it to. And, you know, the hidden stuff that, you know, he was very transparent about yeah. the costs and how things ran and all the dedication. And that's a key word here is, is dedication that he puts into it along with his team. And uh, it just started like accidentally he starts a shop to start selling merch and stuff and all sorts of things. But it's only for Europe. So those that are want to buy stuff from him here in the States, unfortunately, he can't. But I thought that was very interesting on where he's taking it. Yeah. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that, you know, that whole interview happened really because of PJ Clark. PJ yeah. Clark was the one that that planted the seed and got the two of us connected. And, um, you know, PJ was working in the U.S. He didn't go to Iowa. So he's he's working the, the back channels and directing the two of us at Iwa to get together and mm -hmm. do that recording. And what's funny, the intro to that interview is a line that PJ wanted us to use. And it's from a really obscure movie called Under the Rainbow. Uh, it's a 1981 film um, with Chevy Chase that I don't think ever really got much notoriety, but um, PJ really loves that line from that movie the pearl is in the river. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what's really funny about that is I, I was going to put the visual from the film in overlaid in my interview right after I said that line until I saw who was speaking that line. And then I'm like, I pumped the brakes and I'm like, yeah, no, I, I don't want to go there. So if you want to learn more about that, do put it in your Google box and uh, and do a search on the Pearl is in the River and play that clip from the original movie Under the Rainbow. Um, kind of a kind of a weird movie, honestly, PJ. If I'm going to be honest, but uh, yeah, it was it was a heck of a lot of fun, and uh, and Giles was quite uh, quite a quite a giving person to go along with that whole joke. Yes, yes, it was. Uh, he picked right up on it, and I'm like, "What is he talking about?" Okay, code word, but now I'm going to have to go look for this movie. Yeah, and watch it. I don't know that you want to watch the whole movie, but <laughs> you can. You, you can. You certainly can. But Sounds it's definitely good. a bit of a uh, bit of an obscure film. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I mean, I was I was rather impressed with all of it, and um learning the knowledge and just i i'm excited for all the stuff that you discovered there and the people you've talked to but the fact that giles sat down with us uh greatly appreciated you know um one of these days when we go to in europe again maybe we go for a cheeseburger or some pizza uh because i know he knows some good places to go eat over there so and i get the impression that pizza would make giles really happy i agree <laughs> so um I, on that topic though i do want to add uh, to please keep giles in your thoughts and your prayers um <clears throat> he's working through some health issues i'm not going to get into them but understand that he's got some uh he's got some procedures coming up that are uh mm -hmm. not exactly considered low risk 
So do keep him uh, do keep him in your thoughts and send some positive vibes his way. He's fine. It's just they're they're uh, artifacts of becoming an older male in this world, and you yeah, know, he needs to he needs to uh, needs to get on top of them and uh, and get them resolved. I just want him to know that the air gun industry and the air gun faithful are behind him one hundred percent. Agree. Agree, most definitely. We're one big, one big family, trying to take care of each other. Yep. All right. Well, um, I want to remind everyone that there is an Airgun Geeks Facebook page. Uh, just go to Facebook and look up the Airgun Geeks uh, group. Please answer the questions. It's how I keep uh, the bots out. And um, people who are just trying to sell stuff that aren't supposed to be selling stuff on Facebook. And uh, those so bots are getting a lot smarter. <sighs> yes. And I appreciate everyone that helps me uh, keep that page going. I think we're right around fifteen or 1,600 people in there from all over the world. Um, and if you're using Apple Podcast, please give us five stars if you absolutely like what you hear and leave a comment. It really helps with the algorithm and getting the podcast out. And uh, Apple likes to see that too, uh, especially us. Um, and the same goes if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, the same thing goes with YouTube. Hit that thumbs up, hit yep. subscribe, and also leave a comment. That that kind of activity um, drives the algorithm that we battle quite heavily all the time. It gives us uh, a lot more weight to to get our voice heard on Correct. those news as well. Correct. And make sure you, you tell people about us because we've been growing fast. So we know people have been doing that. Um, if you, you know, if you like things about the podcast, put them in the comments. If things you don't like or topics you're like, hey, I'd like to know about this or whatever. We have no problem responding. You can always email us um, and we can discuss it and see what we can do to help you out. Even if it's, you know, not necessarily talked about on the podcast itself. We are air gunners also. And yep. um, we can always show you a direction or get you connected with someone to help you out with your problem. So, Very true. and if you have an event coming up, remember we can uh, we can help you cover that as well. Correct, correct. And um, just just a quick shout out since you said event, I just want to mention that the Northeast Air Gun Challenge is going on. So if you're in the area, just show up, have some fun, and then make sure you check out RMAC, which is coming up in June. Uh, registration should be opening soon. And as we all know, that's that sells out quickly. I believe but, the PA Cup was also announced this week as well. That's right. That's right. The PA Cup was also announced, but registration hasn't opened for that. And that's in September. Um, I don't remember when, but we're working on that. Um, I will say to help with all of this craziness, Bonnie is secretly behind the scenes building a fancy website. Uh, yes, thank God. It's it's taken some time, but due to the gracious sponsoring of our sponsors, we now have the funds to do a, a nice website. And it should be launching here soon. We're working out some details and some final parts, and it's going to get exciting. So, but I think that's that's about it for this week, unless you got something extra, Bill. Nope, I'm I've got given it all I can this week, I think. <laughs> Very good. So I want to thank everyone for taking time to watch Bill and I and uh support the podcast and all that. And remember to remember good things, positive light. Uh the world is a crazy place, and we thank you for taking time to listen to us. And like always, stay geeky. <laughs> <laughs>